This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. It's funny, like when you're in a creative field like photography, you sometimes find yourself in like a slum of like no creativity, a lot of self-doubt. And more often than not, it spirals into this circle of like bad habits and zero productivity. But sometimes we just don't feel it right. But imagine this, let's say you're a doctor, right? And you call your boss at seven in the morning telling him like, you know, I, I want to go to work today, but I just don't, today I just don't feel inspired, you know? I don't know, there's just, I'm not feeling it. I don't feel like being a doctor today. <laughs> I know it's not the same and you can't compare these two, but I think it's like a healthy way to look at it. Like if you're serious about photography, even if it's not your job, even if it's your hobby, but if you're serious about photography, it should be prioritized as such and it should be taken seriously. My name is Frederick Trovaden. I do photography here on YouTube. And today we're gonna to talk about how you combat the lack of motivation or feeling uninspired. After you finish watching this, I hope that you at least know a little bit more about why you got into photography, what your goals are, and how you will get there. And if you do get there or you don't get there, you know that it's you who are the responsible person for making that happen. <laughs> Let's do it. As a photographer, I've had plenty of moments where I feel like uninspired or unmotivated or doubting myself so much that I'm like, why am I even doing this anyway? And everyone has these moments. I don't care who you are. You have self-doubt and you have motivation that goes high and low sometimes. That's just how it is. I think the question is how people bounce back from it and how fast they do it. I think some people can live in that slump for days, other for months and some for years. But how you got into that slump and why and who's to blame, it doesn't really matter. I think it's all about how you bounce back from it and that's what we're gonna talk about today. In order for you to bounce back to where you were when inspiration and motivation was at all time high, I think it's important to ask yourself why you're taking photos in the first place. And in the making of this video, I also asked myself that and I'm like, I think I take photos because I, it makes me feel good. And what makes me feel good about it is I do street photography. So I see a lot of people in the streets. I walk to corners and to places I wouldn't normally have done unless I had a camera. And yeah, meeting a lot of people and taking cool photos is super fulfilling for me. So that's probably why I do it. The adventurous part, meeting a lot of people I wouldn't have met and seeing a lot of places I wouldn't have seen. Those are top of my list in terms of why I like to do photography. You need to come up with the answers for your reason why you're doing photography too. Now would be a good time for you to grab a pen and a paper so we can write our stuff down. You can write your reason stuff for why you're doing photography and we'll get through this together. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for you here, no worries. Don't sweat it, brother. <laughs> Step two is, I think, is to understand what's your goal in photography. Because why you're doing something is not the same as the goal or the thing you want to achieve with it. That's two different things. For me personally, my goal in photography is probably to change something for the better. That sounds very cute, but it's prob it probably is. And that's the, usually the photography that I'm drawn to. Like people who have done something socially with their photography and done something that is difficult to write in words, so therefore they took a photo to explain it. I love that part about photography. Another goal of mine is to create a photography book, probably based on street photography in Mexico City. And the third goal is probably to be pretty much doing YouTube and photography full time at some point. So take a minute and write your goals down of what you want to achieve with photography. And it's important and it does like it can change or maybe you don't have it like top of mind right now, but it's really important because when you have a goal, then you can like break down on how to get there. But without it, it's gonna get really difficult to achieve something you don't really know what is. All right, you're good, we continue. When you have come closer to these like deep questions about why you're doing photography and your goal with photography, whether it's a hobby or a job, then we can get down to like actionable tips about how to just get out there and get the stuff done. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Usually what I do is I just try to do it even if I don't want to and I don't feel like it, like just forcing myself to it. It's not very often I need to and usually I think my inspiration and motivation is kind of there because I usually take photos once a week. So it's not that high volume, which makes me want to like looking forward to it every week. But I really don't believe in like inspiration will just rain down on you from heaven and bless you. I think it's something you need to work for and something you need to find and waiting for it is ludicrous in my opinion. So we need to get out of the door. How we do that is we set deadlines. So you say to yourself on Tuesday, I'm gonna take two hours of photos from six to eight or whatever. And then you do that, that's it. You might feel unmotivated to go on the day or you might feel like you're beating yourself up or you have self doubt or whatever it is that keeps you from going out and take photos. 
but you need to meet that deadline. That's it, no excuses. And then when you are out taking photos, then maybe you'll beat yourself up. I usually do that a little bit, but I come home feeling like I didn't regret doing this. And that's like a pro tip for life. Like do a lot of things that you never regret once you have done them. Like if that's going for a run or if that's going to take pictures, like there's not any photo walk that I come home and I'm like, uh, I regret going out today or something like that. Another thing that I do when I don't like feel it is that I go back to the moment where photography came into my life, which was when I took this photo you see here, which is about two and a half years ago. And when I look at that photo, I remember why I at that moment thought maybe I should be a photographer or do something in photography because I was so happy with the photos that I took. And when I look at this photo, I still think like, I need to go back to take more photos that are in that has the same feeling as that photo had for me when I took it. Another thing I do when I don't feel inspired is I watch other photographers do their job. So either I go on YouTube or I watch photo documentaries like the ones that you see here. And when I see these documentaries and I see these photographers talk so passionately about their photos and how they got the photos and their hustle and so on, it's contagious. So it makes me want to do the same. And there's plenty of great photo documentaries on YouTube that I will recommend. I have put all of them in the description below. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, and I'm really excited about them supporting my channel because I've already built my fair share of Squarespace sites in the past for me and my photography friends, and I've always recommended them. So if you're a photographer like me who wants to show your work in a professional way, then go to Squarespace, pick a template for your website from the large collection of portfolio designs and present your photography elegantly. Head to squarespace.com slash Frederick to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. A personal favorite of mine is the William Klein documentary called Many Lives of William Klein, Everybody's Street and Vivian Meyer's documentary, even though she gets a little bit of flame for not maybe being the photographer that people made her up to be. I still think Vivian Meyer was cool and I like her photos. So there's that. Lately, I have also invested in a lot of photography books and I even did a whole video about like photography books with my friend Wesley that I'll link to up here. Yes, I picked the right side. <laughs> if you haven't watched that video already, go check it out. It's great. In terms of photography books, there are three that I would like to recommend. One is Road to Seeing by Dan Winters and it's so, so good. And it offers something a lot of other more famous photography books and more recognized don't, which is a lot of text about how Dan Winters became the photographer he is or was, or is he alive? <laughs> I should have researched that. Um, <laughs> but in that book, you see how he hustled his way from his first jobs at other photo studios, biking across all of New York, trying to get the photos that he wanted to. And it's just a great story. And a lot of other photography books don't offer that in-depth information and text, which is a shame. Next one is Decisive Moment by Henri Cartier Bresson. Are we happy? <laughs> We're cool. He was one of the most famous street photographers of all time and he made the photo book that people refer to as the Bible of all photo books. And I put links to all of them in the description. And the last photo book I would like to recommend is called Photographs by the New York Times, which is all their like front covers and all their big editorial shoots. And in this book, you hear the stories from the photographer's point of view, photographing a really famous person and they talk about their like anxiety before they go to the photo shoot or maybe the, it's their first photo shoot or maybe the subject is acting up or whatever, but you get all the juicy stories in that book. And the reason why you want photo books in order to get inspired and motivated is because it gives you an opportunity to sit down, quiet and take this in instead of like scrolling Instagram like a mad person, like all of us do. So it gives you some space to actually think about your own photography and the photographer's photography whom you're reading about. <laughs> that makes sense? Great. Another thing that I have done lately is to invest in something called Oblique Strategies, which is this like small cards that gives you an, a new idea or a new perspective on your creative work. So as you see here, this is the iPhone app version of it. There's also the physical cards on Amazon. The cards were first published in 1975 by Brian Eno and Peter Smith as a way to, to think differently about the work you're doing when you're in the process of doing it. But it's a fun way to like challenge yourself and focus on one theme for this photo walk and nothing else. Like it declutters your brain and all the infinite options there are and it like narrows your focus. And they're fun, so if you wanna try that, I have put a link to the Amazon cards and the iPhone app. I think the iPhone app is a couple of dollars. 
but yeah, check it out. And last but not least, try to do something different than you usually do. So if you always go to the same spot, try to go to a new spot. If you always shoot with the same camera or the same lens, try change those. Maybe buy a cheap Polaroid camera or buy a disposable camera or do something that mixes whatever you're doing up so you get like a new perspective and like a fresh mind. And maybe you can even call a friend if you have a photography friend and you can go and take photos together. Sometimes it helps seeing another person do his work. All right, so to wrap this up, find out why you're doing photography in the first place. And if it matters to you, then it should be prioritized as such. So go out there, set a deadline, even if you don't feel like it. Set a deadline and you have to go on that day. Even if you feel like shit or if you want to beat yourself up or if you have doubts, whatever, you have to go. Try find inspiration in photography documentaries. I put a lot of links in the description. Get some photo books. They are also in the description. Maybe buy the oblique cards for you to narrow your focus down. And yeah, then, <laughs> then good luck. <laughs> That's kind of what I do when I'm in like a rut, but usually I just try to pull myself up and of course it's like it also depends on how you feel mentally. So if you don't feel great mentally, all of this we talked about, it goes down the drain anyway before you like are healthy or happy are confident that you can see a future that you care about and all of these other things, they kind of like, they kind of like they kind of like lay the foundation of doing all these other things that you would like to do with photography, if that makes any sense. But yeah, that's it for my pep talk. I hope you could use it. And if you have any tips and ideas for what people can do when they're not feeling motivated or when they're not inspired, then put them in the comments. There will be more pep talks like this, maybe if I feel like it, or if you guys enjoyed it, let me know what you think about this video and this format. What's the setting? Do you like it? Does black and white work for you guys? Or would you rather have it in color? Let me know. And if you're interested in seeing me do some photo walks, then I put a link over here so you can follow my photography on YouTube. I appreciate it. Keep it real. <laughs>